Hey folks, this is Mike Dolphson from the Microsoft Education team. We're on the latest edition of Remote Learning with Microsoft EDU. And so this is the show that we've been doing for close to two months. And we're maybe close to show number 30. And we're very excited today. So again, we've got Lauren Taylor from the Tacoma School District. And she is going to be talking about Teams for Education and she's going to be talking about class, staff, and family. And I've known Lauren for quite a while, and it's great to have her on the show today. Before we get going, though, just covering a few things. We've got our remote learning site that we always talk about that has the latest and greatest updates. We've got our Teams for Education Quick Start Guide, and that's a PDF that you can download. It's in many different languages. It helps you get up and running quickly on Teams. And then if you want to sign up for our remote learning community. That is where we have almost 5,000 educators all in one community, collaborating, working with each other. The product team is in there. I'm in there. Many others helping, supporting, getting questions answered. So if you have not joined our community, we encourage you to do that as soon as you can. Now in terms of today's update, some good ones. We've got a brand new special education and early ages page that just went live this morning. It's on our Microsoft Educator Center, the MEC. There's a short link here for MEC Early Ed. So a lot of great information, videos, and content all about special education for early age students. We also, or I should say me, I just made a new playlist that is all about video and screen recording. So quick tip videos on videos about videos and screen recording since they've become so popular during distance learning. And then to reiterate a really big important blog last week that had a whole ton of Teams updates. That is right there. And we encourage people to go visit that link, check it out, get all the latest and greatest. And with that, we're going to introduce Lauren Taylor here. I've known Lauren for quite a while, like I mentioned earlier. Follow her on Twitter if you haven't already. And Lauren, I actually, I pulled a fun picture up. This is when uh, Lauren visited. Did for a hackathon <laughs> at Microsoft about a year and a half ago. We were wearing our capes. Lauren is the Power BI queen in her side job. Looks like her, her second job is Power BI queen. So it's awesome to have you on the show, Lauren. And I will stop presenting and let you take over. All right. Sounds good. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. I've got the right one up. You can. Let me know. Are you seeing it? Yep. Okay. It. All right. Well, yes, my name is Lauren Taylor and I am the assistant principal at Manitou Park Elementary in Tacoma, Washington. Next year I will move um, into the principal role and so we'll just continue our learning journey. So thanks for joining us today. I'm just going to share with you um, how we use Teams as a staff and how we use it uh, with our students and um, you know just some information about how our parents feel about what's going on right now virtually. So um, we use a team, we've been using Teams as a staff for about three years now. Um, so we adopted it not too long after it came out and every year has gotten better. Um, so we have one staff Teams and the general channel is just where we have, um, have all of our, it's our information hub. So every grade level committee, um, has a channel and um, every grade level has a channel and then every committee has a channel um, as well. And so PLCs um, virtually now happen in their respective channels. So in this in this uh, uh, slide here, you can actually see when I took this picture, second grade was having their PLC at that time. And what I really like about having one staff teams is that when I log in, I can say, oh, second grade's meeting or so and so is meeting. Um, so it's really helpful. And we use the general channel just as you know all of our staff announcements. And then this is uh, Ariel Becker. She is our instructional facilitator, our instructional coach, and um, she holds office hours in the general channel as well. So lots of things happen um, happen in our teams, and we just lots of fun. And then. Um, we also use uh, the staff notebook portion of Teams. Um, we use it in a, in a bunch of different ways. Uh, the My principal and I is where we use our leader only section and we house all of our rubrics for evaluation. 
um, or other things like that where teachers are or where we're working collaboratively on something that maybe we don't want to send out to teachers just yet. But we also use it um, for um, for teacher feedback and evaluation. So, you know, every teacher has their own their their own section of the OneNote, and that is how we keep a lot of our um, evidence and documentation. Um, so you can kind of see some of that here. All right, I have a rubric here. The green or the black text is what I've written to a teacher, and then the green text is, you know, what they've written back. So it's two-way communication. They can attach uh, different pieces of evidence. So I really, really love using Staff Notebook as, um, you know, for evaluation for that reason, because when I'm going in to put things in our final evaluation, um, I can just kind of copy and paste from what's there. Woohoo! Go Staff Notebook! <laughs> <laughs> the next uh, piece that we use, and a lot of people don't uh, always realize, is that, you know, what's kind of what I call behind. I don't know if that's right, but I always say that share, a SharePoint site is behind a Teams. I don't know if that's right or not, Mike, but <laughs> but that's how I introduce it in every single um, that's right. Every single Teams has, you know, a SharePoint site, and so we use that as what we call home base. So you'll see that right up at the top. And what home base for us, um, when we were in school, it's where teachers uh, took lunch count. So we just had a forms there, um, and then lots of our uh, lots of other information there as well. And so this is how we're using it now that we're virtual and we don't have to take lunch count and all of that, you know, every day. So we've got upcoming events. Um, and then we use, I use what's uh, bookings, Microsoft bookings, and we do our own virtual support. Um, and so, and you can see here, we have different staff members, so it's not just me. You know, if you need help with um, EL teaching strategies, you can book a 30 minute slot with our, you know, EL teacher. And all of that kind of fits very nicely into, uh, into the SharePoint site. So it's not hard to pull it, you know, to pull any of that in. Um, lots of our te teachers are getting really proficient with other Microsoft apps, and um, it's been really helpful for me because what they are able to do is put themselves out there to be booked. So if you need help with Sway or you need help, you know, getting getting students or getting families on Teams um, or anything like that, our, our staff members are becoming proficient enough to where, you know, other staff are booking times with them, which is which is great. Um, and also they know that they're proficient in that because another thing that our staff has really been doing is using time to get their um, Microsoft tips or their Microsoft certificates. So here's just how I, you know, you can go through and you can see how we book. So those are all just different staff members. So it's not just me. And here we have our um, staff meetings. We do all of our staff meetings via Teams, obviously, and then we record those. So if someone's not able to make it to a staff meeting, then it's recorded automatically in stream and we just have a channel here. And then all of our uh, how to videos that are recorded in stream are on this page um, as well. And so it's really helpful, you know, for whatever reason someone can't make it or they say, well, what did she say about that? Um, they can easily access, you know, the video. Hey Lauren, question. Did you see the new stream screen recording that just started rolling out? I saw that this morning and I was mm -hmm. I was so excited. That would be um, great what you're talking yeah, about. That'll be really great. And then uh, we use a different sway every week in our staff meeting. So we add that as a link for a resource here for people to refer back to. And then I um, at the bottom I put a bunch of um, recommended oops. Sorry, recommended Microsoft Educator courses. Let me try and get back to that really quick. Come on. And um, I'll put the ones that I feel are relevant for the staff, um, kind of where they are. You know, they, they go on the Microsoft Educator Center, you know, at large and can browse and, and see what, what kind of um, relates to the work that they're doing. But I kind of take generally as, as a staff, these are some things that, um, I recommend and I've noticed that, you know, if I'm recommending them, the, the, the staff will take those classes and become proficient themselves. So I try to change that up just kind of based on our needs and where we are and, you know, what Microsoft keeps putting out, which, which are some really good courses. And then down here, you'll see what we do is right here where it says badges. That's actually a tab in Teams that's a forms and um, and that forms teachers can you know type in their name and they can attach their 
their um, certificate from taking a course, and then that automatically kind of populates into this gallery. So we call it our little hall of fame and people are really rocking it right now. So I'm really proud of them. Um, so that's just kind of how we use the SharePoint site as a tab in Teams, we call it home base. Um, another way that we use Teams as a staff is with um, Power Apps. So Power Apps um, is on the, um, <coughs> excuse me, on the Power Platform, on the Microsoft uh, Power Platform end. And um, it's a really great integration for education because what you essentially can do is build an app having no experience as a coder. I don't have any of that experience, but I was able to build, you know, this reading app for my staff. Um, and we use that, you know, um, when, when we were in school, we used it daily for, you know, one-on-one -on -one reading conferences, our check-in and check out. So here's a, just kind of a little preview of how we use it. And so they can, staff can go in and they can have either a one-on-one -on -one conference with students and keep notes there or keep notes for their guided reading group. So it's kind of like that big guided reading, reader's workshop binder, all in an app with every single student in it. So um, it's something we use a lot. I'm working on another app right now to put into Teams. Um, for, for that would kind of cater itself to distance learning. So I like the integration with Teams because it, it doesn't feel like it's something extra that the staff has to learn um, because they're already comfortable with Teams and then you just put it in there as a, as a tab and it doesn't feel like something extra or something outside. Um, so I was excited when I found that integration. And then another way that we, um, so now we're talking more about virtual students and so um, I have a teacher who has her own classroom teams all of our grade levels have I think at this point all of our classes have um, classroom teams and my school is pre-k through fifth grade so we have pre-k students um, that are in a teams and showing up for virtual read alouds uh, every week which is a lot of fun to see three-year-olds on teams try to listen to a story is the cutest thing ever and so um this teacher has um, her own uh, teams and she uses the SharePoint site This uh, that's behind it as well. This was her first year doing it, but she built it for the virtual classroom um, that she has now. And so she, she'll include a video of herself every week kind of explaining what's going on in the week. She, you know, includes photos of the students work. Um, either recent or from before we school closed and then all of their tasks for the week are all in one place. So the kids log into one site in Teams and have everything there and she houses hers right up at the top as well in the um, in the top tabs. So again, another really nice, uh, really nice integration. And then um, also as a staff, we all use uh, Sway for our weekly assignments. So every um, every classroom, every grade level from pre-K all the way through fifth grade, there's one sway for math, reading, um, and science or social studies. And um, that was because we were really trying to find a way that we can get lessons home to families, even if they don't have access to a computer. Um, and what we really liked about sway was that we could put a lot of things in there. It could have the feel of a website. At the same time, they could view it mobily. And uh, Teams, you can do the same way. It was just that we didn't have, we, while we had so many students on Teams, parents weren't quite used to it yet, but we still needed to deliver lessons. And so Sway was the first thing that we put out to families, and then Teams quickly came right behind it. But we wanted to make sure our kids were accessing uh, that, that content first. And so this one, you know, our, te our teachers always include a forms um, in their sway, and then all of our sways are actually housed in a wakelet. So I'll show you that um, in a little bit as well. And so some teachers will put it right here at the top of their, um, their class, you know, one for math, reading and writing, uh, that type of thing. So kids can just get to it and click to it easily. So what's nice is you have all of these options knowing that not all families have used Teams before, but a lot of their students have. So we try to keep it easy. Um, we have Flipgrid rolling out as well. We have a lot more, um, you know, in the primary because they just, they love it. You know, you can, you can get likes and hearts and all of these things. And we know that likes is life right now. So um, 
our kindergartners have uh, a story that a teacher used PowerPoint recorder to record herself reading a story to the students, and then they had to then write their own story that was similar. And so we used Flipgrid for that, where the kids could then log in um, to Teams. They could see that Flipgrid. I think she actually shared it in her conversations as well. Um, and then they could, uh, you know, write their own story and read it, read it aloud, read it back to their teacher and comment and like on each other's stories. So it still keeps the engagement is what we really like. Um, because our one of our building goals was student talk. Um, was just really having rich conversations with students and having them question one another. And so obviously when school closed, we lost some of that. But when when we made that really big push for teams, then we're able to get some of that back. So we have virtual classes going and then using Flipgrids for them to comment on one of one another's work. Um, I have another teacher who uses the class notebook in um, in her team. She has a photo album to where she anytime she gets photos from kids who are do, doing their work or any of that, then she posts it here and then all of her all of her students can see still see one another working. I just thought that was a really cute, cute way to um, kind of incorporate just that classroom classroom. That's culture. super cool. I like that. Yeah, isn't that cool? Um, and so she just keeps adding us because sometimes parents will email her and um, you know photos or whatever so she puts them all on there so they can see one another and it motivates them to keep working and then um of course you know you cannot talk about teams without the ability to have a class meeting um or without uh talking about the ability to have a class meeting which was really important for us like i said you know our goal as a school was um, student talk and rich student discussions and we didn't want that to go away and now we don't have to and so what i do is i put together um every week just what time that the class meetings are and teachers send those out to families but then i also post it on our facebook and I kid you not, we have from preschool all the way through fifth grade weekly class meetings where you log in and you see those little faces, um, little faces learning. So they have them, you know, set up recurring meetings and kids just log in and jump on. And sometimes parents jump on and say, could you help me figure out, you know, how to do X, Y and Z or it's the kids and the teachers are, are doing a lesson. So we just really appreciate um, that ability to continue our goal as a school. And so then our um, our Wakelet is where we house all of our um, all of our lessons. And so uh, some teachers just stick it right up at the top and then students can scroll through because oftentimes what we'll find is sometimes the older students are helping a younger sibling and it's nice to just have every single grade, every single Sway lesson all in one place. And what we do is we actually text out that link um, to families and email it out and post on Facebook the, the one link of where all the resources are um, to families, which has been has been really nice. So we're not searching all over the place. And then, of course, it's housed and lives um, in teams. And then in terms of parent feedback, um, we I did you know put a survey out to parents. Um, about a week ago and just wanted to know, you know, how are they feeling in this world of virtual learning and is what we're doing um, supporting them at home or making it harder for them? And, um, you know, and I asked them to be really honest because I don't I didn't want to hear a lot of fluff. I wanted to hear, you know, how I can help them, you know, in this journey and some of the, you know, the content that came back, you know, people were saying that they were so they were appreciative of, of the content that went out. Um, their students are able to log on without a lot of supervision from them. Um, keep having teachers make videos. So we're learning PowerPoint recorder and getting those out. And um, one parent even requested it. It would be nice if there was a set time every day, like lunchtime, for the kids to be able to hang out with each other on Teams or have social interaction. And I really liked that because at first, um, I was a little nervous, you know, my parents had never logged into Teams and I didn't want them to feel like I was do, giving them a big ask. And so to hear that they wanted more time on Teams was really awesome. And um, and so then, uh, you know, another one says he generally understands his work and if he doesn't, he uses the Teams calls on Tuesdays and Thursdays um, to ask questions or email the teachers. So um, again, our journey with Teams, uh, 
you know, since we've been using it for so long, my teachers are just ready to go and ready to just, you know, get out there and try what's new. Um, so that's kind of how we use it, you know, at Manitou and here in, in Tacoma. Wow, Lauren, that is, I love, I, I wish the whole world could just adopt your system so easily. They're, they're so well organized, systemically structured and, and seem, wow, there's so much good stuff there. Uh, I was joking behind the scenes that uh, Maryline, who's our producer, who's also a very organized and efficient just by nature, uh, I said she's probably crying happy tears of joy watching <laughs> you go through this right now because it is so amazing. So <laughs> thank, you. thank you for sharing it. Really yeah. great. Yeah, I felt like I was, you know, kind of a water hose, but yeah, I mean, from the first day that we started using Teams, um, you know, quite a few years ago. It's just been nonstop from them and from then in terms of just trying new things and say, oh, this is out. Oh, this is out. We can do this. And just kind of letting teachers have, um, you know, just some playtime and experimentation. And now that we're in this virtual learning scenario, um, they're they're ready, which is which is awesome. You know, they're helping one another or helping colleagues in different districts and different schools because they already have the tools and the know-how and I'm, I'm really proud of them. Why well, I think it's a testament to what you've done because guess what? If you hadn't had all these things prepared and thought out, now the distance learning turns on immediately, which pretty much the world did not expect. Right. At least you're ready to go and you can, okay, we have more people using this, but we have a structure in place and it's well thought out. So it's probably you've made it easy for your whole district to get up and running quickly is my guess. Yeah, so, yeah. That's it's great. been a great journey for sure. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. And we're just yeah. going to do a quick wrap up. OK. And in terms of the recap of today's updates, the early ages and special education link that just went live yesterday. The video and screen recording playlist that I just put out that's brand new that has a bunch of quick tip videos on using video and screen recording both that are popular. And then there's a great new Teams blog that recaps a whole lot of updates that have just rolled out or are in the process of rolling out right now. We'll have all of the show notes in this PowerPoint, including Lauren's great slides posted tomorrow morning. And this entire webinar will be posted on our YouTube playlist the remote learning playlist with all of our others. And then also if you have a bug or issue or having challenges with anything with our software, definitely file a support ticket. This is the educator focused link. We have support folks that are focusing on helping out teachers. So that's the link to use there. Other than that, we've got a couple of good webinars coming up next week. We have Cal Armstrong and Tom Grissom talking about innovative pedagogy during distance learning. And then we've got a great dyslexia and distance learning session coming up on Tuesday, May 19th. And there'll be a couple others that we probably add in between now and then. So thank you very much. Thank you, Marilyn, from behind the scenes. And we hope to see you soon.